Welcome everyone. Once again, let's talk about urban planning. And today we talk about how borders, boundaries within the cities create inequalities and limit possibilities. And my guest today, uh, Harsh Jaktar, argues that these borders are often based on colonial, modernist ideas that divide the city well, into categories like formal, informal, public, private. So let's uh, let's check it out. Harsh, welcome to our episode. Hello. Hi. So Harsh, if I read it well, while the topic of borders in cities has been explored, the specific concept of urban borderlands as a space for subaltern agency is a gap in the research. So yours focuses on how people living in self-built neighborhoods use the spaces between themselves and the formal city to resist inequalities imposed by, you know, by a dominant system. So tell us more about this. Yeah, um, so thanks for, first of all, inviting me uh, to speak about this topic. Um, so I just wanted to mention why I uh, was interested in first understanding this uh, this inequality. So when I grew up in um, in Western India, cities of Western India, I see that I saw that there were uh, inequalities within cities that were quite evident um, and almost, uh, you know, poor neighborhoods uh, and rich neighborhoods would sit side by side. So there was a very clear divide. Uh, that separated uh, the cities that um, I, you know, I've, I've lived in. So it is that that helped me, um, you know, or guided me to think about uh, borders, really. Um, but what I was interested in, as you know, as you mentioned, uh, there is a lot of research that has shown that you know, top-down dominant um, uh, approaches to urban planning uh, have a tendency to uh, create uh, borders. And precisely, uh, a lot of scholars have um, traced the history of colonial modernity to, to highlight that it is precise that binary understanding between, you know, public, private, vehicular, pedestrian, secular, religious, and so on and on, uh, is that that logic is what allows or, you know, creates or materializes into cities in the form of divisions. Mm -hmm. But yet, um, having again witnessed um, um, uh, cities um, uh, in Western India and, you know, self-built neighborhoods, uh, I've noticed also that people uh, exercise their agency to uh, to make their neighborhoods livable. Um, they are not really necessarily, you know, poor, um, uh, marginalized, dilapidated housing where everybody's suffering. That's not, that's not the image that you see when you go and witness uh, self-built neighborhoods. So it's really that conundrum that I wanted to resolve or, you know, understand really as to what is it that people do um, uh, in the light of the divisionary uh, logics of planning uh, that that come to them from elsewhere, from top down. Um, but what is it that they do with these borders and how is it that they make um, life livable, right? So mm -hmm. cities more open and, and uh, livable. Mm -hmm. So, well, let's jump into the findings. What, what do people do? Yeah, um, so... so um, there, there are again. I mean, going back to the literature a bit, um, there, there is an obvious, uh, you know, logical um, uh, response to the top-down planning practice in terms of intellectual thinking is that people resist from the bottom up, right? Um, so there is a lot of literature that does uh, show, uh, you know, resistive practices um, of uh, of people living in marginalized communities um, and se uh, self-built settlements. So my research really showed that instead of uh, resisting uh, from the outside, so to say, or in a democratic space, so to say, um, people actually um, uh, inhabit the borderlands that the borders create. So any border uh, creates a zone um, around that border, that um, which borderland studies has shown quite um, well, um, that that space around the border which allows for you know norms from both sides of the border in this case private public religious secular etc to coexist now what people do is that they inhabit these they make these borderlands their own um and by by making them their own they create um uh, cre they create spaces in the borderlands that are porous that allow for flows from one side of the border into the other um and we have seen uh, a lot of research um, that shows uh, that shows precisely these kinds of practices at borders between nations, nation states, for instance. But uh, in this particular research, 
um, um, I, I show that material artifacts like simple things or mundane things like walls and uh, and religious structures, you know, small ones uh, that are in the cities, uh, are you know, act like the borderlands that make um, flows between the uh, between the two sides of the binaries uh, possible. So it is through that, you know, making borders more porous, if you want to call it, um, um, that people make uh, you know their settlements more livable. So you mentioned these agents in from bottom up in your study that people inhabit the borderlands or the zone around the borders and that mm -hmm. well, new flows uh, occur. What mm -hmm. are some, you know, some practical implications um, from this study, like policymakers or for individual choice? What would you say? Um, so more than individuals, so I'll speak about what uh, what policymakers and, uh, and governing institutions, right, planners uh, can do. I think um, because of the col colonial modernist legacy, uh, most planning practices uh, still tend to think through the binary uh, logic of, you know, what is a public zone and what is a private zone, what is a vehicular space and what is a pedestrian space. Um, but given the given the implications of uh, what I what I just mentioned, um, I think thinking through borderlands or using borderlands as a as a logic through which to plan cities uh, is something that planners can take up uh, or policymakers can take up uh, in other words policymakers can uh, can actually support uh, borderlands make borderlands um, uh, more um, uh, more usual in cities so rather than creating borders create borderlands would be my message to 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 policymakers Mm -hmm. Some tips to policymakers uh, yeah. for listening to us. And uh, uh, shifting from policymakers to academia now, so what should uh, future research focus on? So one thing I realized while doing this research and trying to trace some of the binary logics and the borderlands, especially at the at the nuanced level of uh, uh, you know urban borderlands at the level of materiality, um, I I found out that there, there, there are many others that need to be still unpacked. Uh, so binaries are all around us, um, whether it's uh, uh, you know east to west, or so it's the global south and the global north, or uh, men, women, and so on and so forth. Right. Um, so there there are if there are so many binaries and they perpetuate in our cities, then there will be so many borderlands to explore. Um, because um, and, and they will have some sort of materiality in cities. Uh, because it is through the materiality of the city that one experiences these binaries and border borders. So I, I think uh, in terms of academic academia, um, there is a lot to explore, um, both in terms of how what kinds of binaries and borders are being um, uh, materialized in cities and what kind of practices, subaltern practices or uh, practices from the bottom up that unsettle these, uh, these binaries uh, and how can we learn from these and, and translate these lessons from one context to another so that we create more and more open cities. So I think that would be a, a, an agenda for future research. No, that's perfect. And I would like to follow up on that to know some more about your personal reflections on this because uh, your study, so your work and these new flows that occur in the zones around borders, these spaces, it made me think about possibly, and you mentioned this a bit, about the limitations of this binary thinking in urban planning of the rich and the poor, the public and the private. So if this binary thinking should or not perhaps be challenged. And also, you just mentioned is this sometimes subtle and unrecognized ways that marginalized groups enact their agency, so enact action. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. your personal reflections, what struck you the most about your study? I, I would say, I mean, yeah, the, the thing that struck me the most was... Um, was the creativity and resilience that uh, these borderland spaces show, right? Uh, so one, uh, especially in the light of dominant uh, regimes or authoritarian regimes, um, you know, it's it's very, uh, one, f you know, feels uh, that one does not have the agency to change the systems. And I think a lot of, a lot of uh, contemporary scholars are thinking in, you know, whether it's climate change or or other kinds of uh, experiences we are uh, we are seeing in the world. But I think these borderlands have shown me that creativity of of um, and, and resilience towards towards dominant structures. Uh, so it's it's that that struck me the most, um, and and precisely the subtle ways um, I would say because one often thinks that in order to resist dominant 
uh, regimes, one has to, you know, uh, go on uh, riots or whatever, right? Uh, but that's not really how um, necessarily transformation can take place. And that really uh, was a lesson uh, that I learned from this this research about the subtleness um, and 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 non. It's not so much non-resistive, but more transformative um, agency that um, people exercise uh, in, through the borderlands. Uh, and yeah, there is something to learn from that. Yeah, the creativity. If someone just joined our conversation, didn't listen to anything that we talked before, and you wanted to give them one or two sentences to wrap up the whole episode harsh what would it be yeah um well so in through my research uh, i focused on uh, material assemblages or materiality at urban borderlands which um which highlight on the one hand the kinds of binaries um uh, or inequalities and divisions that are being uh, produced in cities and on the other hand, uh, I showed that these the borderlands that are uh, that are created around the borders and the materiality uh, within these urban borderlands um, show um, how people um, living in these urban borderlands uh, inhabit those border borderlands and unsettle the binaries and divisions. So that would be my uh, summary. Perfect, harsh. Thank you very much. Brilliant. Thanks, Rodrigo. So for those who are watching us on YouTube, all the resources, uh, all the materials of this uh, conversation, the study that just Harsh uh, shared um, the findings, you can find uh, right next in the description in the video, uh, along with our Twitter account, our link to the newsletter, the channels to our podcast, uh, so that you can follow up on future episodes.